My name is Joseph and welcome to Monthly News number 54. This is where we recap what's been happening around One Army, our global community of people and projects working on environmental issues. Let's start off talking about Precious Plastic, which is our project that's all about fighting the plastic waste problem around the world. So we just got back from Lagos, Nigeria, where we helped set up a sheet press workspace in partnership with a local startup. You saw some clips in the beginning of this video about that, but I'm not gonna talk too much about it because we have a full video coming out uh, in the next few weeks. And you might be wondering, what's the sort of benefit when you guys do these on-site partnership projects? Well, it actually plays a huge role in sustaining ourselves as a team, as well as steering development for the community. So the way it works is that an organization somewhere around the world, they see a plastic waste problem in their community, and then they come to us and they say, hey, can you guys help us start a precious plastic workspace? So we say yes, depending on the conditions, uh, and then we help pull together the project planning expertise, the machines molds, uh, and then do the on-site training with them to help them get started. It also affords the opportunity to do some iterative developments on the machines and even sometimes making a whole new product. And then we can turn around and share these open source with the community. And this really keeps us as the design team really rooted in the problems that people are facing on the ground. So let me tell you a little bit how this works in practice. So for, over the last few months, we've been working on a project with the UNHCR, which is the United Nations uh, Refugee Development Agency, uh, on a project in Tindouf, Algeria. And this project uh, involves a washing system, which we've been working on, as well as a shredder basic. So we've been doing some iterations and development there. So let me show you what we've been up to. Hello. Hello. Uh, tell me who you are and what you're working on. My name is Carolina and I'm from Chile and I'm working on the new version of the shredder. Awesome. And what was the main uh, motivation behind redesigning this shredder and what was the biggest challenge? So the main reason and motivation why we decided to redesign the shredder was to be able to make it ready to be C certified. Mm -hmm. And as well, one of the biggest challenges was to make it, um, of course, ready to be C certified, but at the same time try to keep the same kind of essence of the precious plastic machines where you can still see how it works, how like, yeah, basically the, the core of the machine and it's keeping its essence without um, hiding too much components, but still keeping it safe. Mm -hmm. Great. And can you walk me through the main changes between this model of the shredder uh, and the previous? Okay, so first we work on the safety components of the machine. Uh, as you can see, the hopper still stays pretty much the same as how, it, how it was before, but now we added this lid. So basically this lid uh, protects you from putting your fingers in, into the blades and, and taking the risk of shredding your fingers. So then it only, uh, the, what we added to this lid was this safety switch, which basically if the, the lid is open, the machine will fully be off. So you won't be able to shred with the lid open. And then once you close it, it activates the switch. So then that means now you can shred. So the only way you can shred is with the lid closed. Then uh, we have the components that protect all the moving parts, such as the bearing, the coupling, and the reducer. So you cannot access to them while the machine is running. Uh, also, we protected the blades um, from the bottom as well. So then you have, a, if, in case you want to shred without a sieve, you have a funnel, so you cannot access the blades from the bottom either. Uh, also, uh, all the other changes we did was the um, the shredder box, so as you might remember before, it, it was welded and it was not fully made out of laser cut parts, so now it's fully made out of laser cut part, it's bolted, and as well we changed the, um, the shaft, so now it's bigger, so of course it's stronger. Uh, also another change we did was the frame, so now it's, it's much wider, so it's much more stable, so the machine cannot fall backwards uh, or to any side and also as well we included some some feet so then you can screw the machine to the floor uh, to make sure that it will not move while threading because of the vibration or anything uh, also another change we did was the, in the electronics so we one of the main components we included now was an overload protection to protect the motor uh, from in case you put any big piece or anything so we make sure we're never going to damage our motor and overload it very often and as well as you can see if you want to come closer uh, now the, the the way we wire the stuff are the components it's much more clean it's much more organized so that anyone that want to make any kind of maintenance on, or work on it can easily understand it perfect yeah, that's it. can we see the shredder run yes 
on. Some plastic. So we open the hopper, and as you can see, I cannot make it work at all. So now we put some plastic, we close it, now we can make it run. Thanks, girl. Yeah, so I'm uh, Jesse, and along with some other people, we've been working on the prototype of the washing system. Cool. And what's the sort of main design uh, mission behind this machine? So this machine is uh, designed for the Algeria project. Um, we're in a water constricted uh, environment, of course with the Sahara Desert. And we, our mission was to um, wash shredded plastic and be able to reuse the water as many times as possible. So we needed a closed loop water system for this. Perfect. And can you show me like step by step how it works? Yeah. So. Um, to start off, we put the shredded plastic in one of these perforated food containers. Mm -hmm. They are an in industry standard, so easy to come by. Okay. And what we do then is we put it in the main washing tank. Okay. So the way this works now is that uh, we are filling up the water tank with uh, the high pressure nozzles. The water level rises and in the meantime all the debris gets blown off of the shreds. Uh, and then the dirty water can overflow into uh, the filtration system in the back. So the main like cleaning mechanisms then are, are these pressure wash, washer nozzles, is yes. that right? Yes. Okay, and it's just kind of blowing the plastic around yeah. in there. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's the wash tank. So what happens to the, the water after, it le after the plastic is washed? What happens to the water? Yeah, so I already mentioned that we wanted to reuse the water. So we need to filter it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that happens in multiple steps. So the first step is uh, this simple filter system that we call the grease trap. Uh, this works on the principle of oil and grease is floating on top of water. So it just skims off the oil and then the microplastics that are floating also get caught in here. Mm -hmm. And after that it's going to the reserve tank. Okay. Uh, in the reserve tank there is uh, these two white hoses coming in. Um, that's a sand filter pump and the sand filter is just circulating the water through here and filtering everything out that is bigger than a grain of sand. Okay. So that already leaves very clean water that we can then use again for the washing process. Excellent. And can we see it run a little bit? Yes, of course. So how long does like a full process take? Like the full cycle takes 15 to 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, let's give you an example of the cleaning cleaningness. I've got these samples. This is how it goes in, dirty. And as you can see on the shreds, there's all this sand and other debris on it. Mm -hmm. And this is how it comes out. So if you look on the shreds, there's no sand and no debris on it anymore. No oil, sticky oils. Got it. Thank you so much. No problem. So you might be wondering, where can I find these developments that you guys are doing? And that question brought up a few other problems that we've been having concerning development uh, around the community. So first of all, yes, we have this problem of doing, we do, we're doing some iterative developments. Where should we share this information? And ideally it would be in the download kit, uh, but the download kit needs to align with the academy. And that often goes with a build video for the machines, for example. And that's quite a heavy lift, and it's not something you want to do each time you're iterating on the machines. So we needed a place that was a bit more flexible, a bit more lightweight. And secondly, there's quite some confusion in the community surrounding the versioning of the machines. So for example, the Shredder Pro. A lot of people refer to this as the V4 Shredder. Um, if you iterate on this design, is it then the 4.1? Uh, but really, we published this as the uh, 0.1 because it was the first uh, Shredder Pro we made. You can see it on the bazaar, in the Discord, lots of confusion around uh, the numbering system and the versioning of the machines. Uh, and lastly, we have this problem surrounding, there's been people who have come to us and said, hey, I'd love to include my machine in the official Precious Plastic Download Kit. Uh, how can I do that? 
and you know we thought okay this is a great idea but we never really found the right place for it so we looked at these three problems and thought of how can we create a new place that kind of solves all three so that's how we came up with what's called the machine inventory and the machine inventory is all about creating a place for the latest and greatest in terms of development going on in the community so it's a place where you can go and see multiple versions of the shredder for example and decide okay which one's going to be best for me to build and you can sort based on yes the type of machine it is uh, plus the quality which we're de defining as the sort of quality of the documentation so how much of the uh, documentation is there how much has it been tested uh, etc and then lastly there's also a, a filter that's all about difficulty for building this machine so what kind of tooling and machining am I going to have to do to uh, actually build this machine? And we're hoping this is going to be the place that's going to really accelerate development in the community. So to be honest, we're not really sure how this is going to go. Uh, the reason we're sharing with you now is to get feedback. Uh, we have just enough out there to really uh, explain the concept. And you can find a link to that uh, down below along with a guide that explains it more in full. However, we really want yeah, your feedback about whether you think this is a good idea, any way you can see it organized differently, any other filters you're thinking about. So let us know in the comments below, uh, as well as the Discord. We'd love to start a conversation with you, with you there. In particular, we're not exactly sure the best place to be storing the information. So we tried a few different systems, including GitHub, uh, GrabCAD, as well as Wikifactory. And yeah, they all, all kind of have their pluses and minuses. So take a look, uh, see what you think, see if you have a preference for where these files are stored in terms of the CAD, the drawings, all that good stuff. Okay, I think that's it for Precious Plastic. Let's move on and talk about Project Camp, which is our project that's all about prototyping a sustainable way of living. So over the last year, Dave and Rita have been in Portugal setting up Project Camp and really focused on getting a base camp set up. And the base camp is all about providing the basic infrastructure, the water, the electricity, uh, to, bring, to start bringing volunteers there. And actually they've gotten pretty far and the first group of volunteers is actually arriving in August. So it's kind of a big step, a little bit scary. Let's see if they're as annoyed with the highway noise as Dave is. And if you haven't seen the update videos yet, uh, they're posting weekly update videos there. Check out that channel, you can find it in the description. And lastly, let's talk about fixing fashion which is a project that's all about fixing and upgrading your clothes so that we can avoid the waste of fabrics. So since this project was launched a few months ago, we've seen a lot of development in the community going on and a few different uh, fixes and upgrades that we'd like to share. So first up, we have an upgrade that was done uh, by About Blanche, and they used a natural dyeing technique using avocados. It's one of the first examples where we've seen people picking up on this technique, so it's really, really cool to see. And secondly, we have an example from Adele, and she's actually in British Columbia. And she took two uh, shirts put together and made a dress out of it. And it looks pretty neat. And lastly, we have this design studio in Texas that upgraded their shorts using an old pair of pants. So again, using some leftover garments to patch together and fix your clothes so you don't have to throw them away uh, in the long term. So please continue to share your fixes and your upgrades. We'd love to see more. Okay, I think that's it for the monthly news. I'm going to go play some banjo in the yurt and we'll see you next time.